Renault protested this year's racing point to the stewards at the Styrian, Hungarian and British Grand Prix, and those protests were upheld by the stewards, meaning they agreed with Renault's argument that the racing point was, well, dodgy. Racing Point were given a 15-point deduction from their constructors' hall, leaving the driver's points untouched, and they were handed a 400 million euro fine. So what did Racing Point do wrong? How did the stewards come to their decisions? And what are the consequences? Let's walk through the timeline. Firstly, Racing Point already have a well-established relationship with Mercedes, including buying parts from them. As the rules stand, some of the parts of a car can be purchased or shared from other teams, and this is mainly in the interest of cost saving. But there are still many, many parts of the car that must be designed and created by the team itself, and these are known as the listed parts. Racing Point rocked up to testing with a look so similar to the 2019 Mercedes that it was clear Racing Point had copied Mercedes, giving the RP20 the nickname, the Tracing Point. Ultimately, Renault decided to protest at the Styrian, Hungarian and British Grand Prix, the Racing Point's rake ducks. These protests were deemed valid by the stewards, who promptly snagged both the Racing Point 2020's brake ducks and the Merck 2019's brake ducks and began their investigation. Why the brake ducks then, when the whole car looks so similar to the Mercedes? Well, it's perfectly legal to use hundreds of photos and videos of a rival's car to try and reverse engineer their ideas into your own design. In fact, this has been going on for decades in Formula 1. Innovation breeds copycats and all that. We've seen that, though, not on such a massive scale normally. For brake ducts, though, most of the key parts are inside and impossible to spot from external photographs. It's much clearer to prove a design is not a team zone the unseen parts are near identical. Crucially, and to add a little complication, brake ducts were not classified as listed parts before 2020, but they became listed parts from the start of the year, though teams did know this was coming from when the sporting regulations were published in April 2019. So Racing Point did legally have in their possession Mercedes 2019 brake ducts and their designs, and were using them legally in 2019. Brake ducts were changed to listed parts and therefore had to be designed by your own team for 2020, as it was noted that brake ducts held important aerodynamic effects and the FAA wanted to make sure components which had important influence aerodynamically could not be provided to another team. Which makes absolute sense to me. So Racing Point have always acknowledged they've aimed to copy Mercedes' design philosophy as much as possible this year, which is allowed they did find themselves in a strange grey area. In 2019, they had in their legal possession the Merck 2019 brake ducts and their designs. So how do you erase this knowledge from your brain when setting out to design your 2020 car? Well, the stewards have acknowledged this complicated situation and that the change in brake ducts from non-listed to listed parts status created a unique set of circumstances, but they do explain exactly where Racing Point went wrong. And the story is different with the front rake ducts than from the rears. So let's start at the front. Here Racing Point were already using Merck's brake ducts on their 2019 car. As brake ducts are an aerodynamic part, they had to be incorporated in to complement the rest of the car. As we know, the aerodynamic flow down the body of a car is a complicated interaction of many surfaces and components. So when Racing Point started developing their RP20 car back in 2019, they used the RP19 with their Merck front brake ducts as a starting point and then evolved it from there. The stewards clarify that if Racing Point had asked the FIA how to go about this legally, the FIA would have helped as the brake ducts were baked into the DNA of the 2019 car's design and as such would have been brought forward into the 2020 car. Basically, it would be unfair to expect Racing Point to scrap a key part of their car and start from scratch, stopping them from doing a normal car evolution due to a new regulation coming in. This itself was a point of ambiguity in the regulation changes, and if this were the only point of contention, Racing Point might have got away with it. But at the rear, it was a different story. So for reasons likely to do with the existing structure of the RP19, Racing Point did not use the Merck's rear brake ducts in last year's car. Instead, it saved them 
for the RP20. Now the difference here is that they could not argue that it was simply evolving an existing legal car design forward into the 2020 model. Instead, they were directly feeding a rival's rear brake duct design into their 2020 car, which was not allowed. The Stewarts state that if Racing Point had asked the FIA if this was cool, the FIA would have said absolutely not, and told them to make their own brake ducts. So now a couple of clarifications. This is a breach of the sporting regulations, not the technical regulations. Don't copy someone else is a rule on sporting behaviour, in much the same way as don't drive into someone else is. It's an act that can be judged, penalised and moved on from. According to the technical regulations, the car is still completely legal, as all the parts are the required dimensions and weights, etc., as demanded by the FIA, so the team can still use these parts. Now, the stewards are annoyed that Racing Point didn't clarify with the FIA whether they were doing the right thing back when they were in the design stage. Now, this is a very normal and expected practice when exploring a grey area in the regulations and would have saved everyone a lot of time and effort. However, they also acknowledged there was very little guidance from the FA when bringing these rules in, and a gaping big grey area for Racing Point to fall into did appear. Furthermore, they are happy that Racing Point have been open and transparent throughout the whole investigation and didn't seem to have any intention of breaking the rules. So Racing Point got issued a points deduction and a fine, which, and this is going to sound a contentious point for many, the stewards have deemed as a fair penalty to balance the advantage Racing Point may have got in their design process. So Racing Point are now allowed to continue using their brake ducts as they are still technically a legal component. Now some people are worried about the precedent this sets and whether, say, Alpha Tori can just strap on Red Bull's brake ducts and accept the fine and points cut for the potential performance advantage. And this is very unlikely, as the stewards have now clarified the grey areas, and part of Racing Point's leeway was due to the fact that there was a lack of clarity. So anyone attempting the same trick now will have no such excuse of ignorance. Now the FIA's head of single-seaters, Nicholas Tambasis, says they now intend to amend the 2021 regulations to clamp down on teams studying rivals' cars through photographs and copying them, which, yeah, good luck with that. I will be astonished if the FIA can find a clear way to regulate such a nebulous concept of looking at another car and copying it, and how to determine if two cars seem too alike. Anyway, what do you think of this? Uh, do you think the stewards came to the right conclusions on balance? This is a complicated situation, but I completely understand how they came to their decision. It still feels a bit of a slap on the wrist, but I'm... I'm not sure what I would have done differently. Now I'll link to the full Stewards conclusion document in the description if you like that kind of thing. Where I wanna be.